What's going on Neon Nation, welcome back to the Neon Arcade for some more in-depth Cyberpunk 2077 coverage. Today we're going to be going over the advanced technology of Night City and Cyberpunk. There's no doubt about the fact that in this vision of 2077, technological advancements have taken some meaningful turns and that technology is one of the most interesting and compelling aspects of this world. This video will include brain dance, VR, augmentations, cyberware, the net, drugs, robotics and drones, AIs and more. First we have robotics and drones. In 2077, society is highly dependent on drones and robotics, from live feed camera drones to sparring robots to giant warehouse and construction machinery. In the world of Night City, trash collectors and robotic street sweepers are automated. From top of the line to slap together from street scrap, robotics are fundamental to every single aspect of life from the economic sector to infrastructure management. In fact, most public transportation in Night City is automated as well. Trains and buses are entities on their own, able to communicate with each other with deep neural networks that can learn and improve efficiency on the fly. In the gameplay demo on E3 trailer, we see examples of these robotics in action as we see these sparring robots used for training fighters, as well as a Militech drone used to scout areas with its aerial eagle eye vision. It seems the Militech drone can also scan targets, much like our Kiroshi optic, and analyzes targets. The Flathead Spiderbot owned by Militech is an experimental military unit with the ability to go invisible as well as support you in combat. The bot can be linked using a Neuralware chip, also known as a splint, to bridge the bot with your own personal neural network for a level of control over your robotics previously unheard of. The Metro or Night City Rapid Area Transit is a huge part of the world and these types of transportation are autonomous. They learn from traffic patterns and the world around it in the pursuit of an optimal method of transport. Next we have one of the biggest aspects of the dystopic Californian metropolis of the dark future and that is cyberware. This is something Mike Pondsmith and the team at CD Projekt Red have actually consulted a neurosurgeon about to increase its real life fidelity and to make sure the implementation of tech that interacts with the body is done right. Cyberware are pieces of technology that can be implanted into a human being, from a biomonitor to regulate one's own body, to advanced thermoptics and vision, to lethal cyber limbs and weapons. Cybernetic prosthetics were developed for practical and medical purposes, and have since become a matter of lifestyle choice. In 2077, cybernetics and cyberware are as commonplace as tattoos and jewelry. The reason people install cybernetics are as diverse as Night City's population, from simple tech upgrades to combat enhancements, and even to become more fashionable. Cyberware can be abused though, and this results in humanity costs associated with each piece of tech. Use too many and become a full body cyborg conversion with a mental disposition known as cyberpsychosis. Examples of cyberware include cyber limbs, cyber audio, cyber optics, fashion wear, neural wear, linear frames, exotics, and interfaces. Bioware is a style of wear that is very similar to cyberware, but with the distinction that it's based on biology rather than electronics or mechanics. Bioware can have non-organic components, but it is used to enhance a biological function instead of replacing it with technology. Body plating and biosculpting can create a resistant or better looking body by shifting muscle and bone or grafting on animal skins and components. Nanotechnology is a type of bioware which includes enhanced antibodies, which can cut healing times in half, toxin binders, which bind to poisons and boost your resistance to them, and nanosurgeons, which are deployed inside your body to repair any physical damage you may receive. Medically, the world of cyberpunk is incredibly advanced, and factions like Trauma Team can bring you back from the edge of death with some of this tech. In the demo, we see the fact that Sandra Dorset has a biomonitor, an internal cybernetic which monitors our vitals. There are cybernetics we have to slot in chips, shards, and splints into, located on our temples. We can slot in shards to see mission objectives like Dexter Deshawn gives us, to control drones and robots like previously mentioned, and they can be fitted with viruses and malware like the one that's affecting Sandra Dorset. We also see a cyber optic called the Kuroshi. They have a Mark I and Mark II make, with the Mark II having the ability to scan more and higher level targets. We also see a subdermal weapon grip, which connects with the optic to bring up ammo counts and links with your weapon to increase its base damage. Militech has one of their goons use a lie detector device on you via a cybernetic that can jack directly into another person. Once jacked in, the hacker's eyes glow blue, maybe due to a linked cyber optic, and could possibly be a voice stress analyzer from the original tabletop game. 
V uses a similar type of cybernetic a little later on in the demo to jack into the Maelstrom's network. The Maelstrom have a variety of types of cyberware, including the front optic mount called the Red Eye, which could give them enhanced vision, and Roy seems to have some cyber audio tech in his ear. Later on in the demo, we unlock a cyber weapon in the Mantis Blades, which has a variety of uses including scaling and perching on walls, as well as deadly and close melee attacks. Next we have brain dance, drugs, and combat drugs. Poverty and despair has led to the denizens of Night City to indulge in the highest forms of escapism. Brain dances are digital recordings that allow you to experience all the stimuli associated with every action the recordee undergoes. Everything from brain activity to motor patterns are experienced by the user. Brain dances are virtual reality on steroids and can be streamed to your neural system via a special augmentation called a BD player. Brain dancing leads to high levels of addiction in Night City. This is the future of dreamlike experiences and includes Hollywood styled production recordings featuring a vision of the high life via an A-list celebrity. Some other brain dance recordings are more controversial where you can enter the mind of a serial killer and live out the bloodlust and monstrous acts he performs for your own indulgence. Drugs and combat drugs in Night City are more prolific and pronounced than ever before. Karenzikov reflex boosters change the battlefield around you as you can use it to perform killing blows by controlling time and space around you. There are other drugs in the world of cyberpunk though. This includes aphrodisiacs, recreational drugs, cool and intelligence boosters, stims, tranquilizers, and more. There are a ton of drugs, so we're going to go through some of the most unique and interesting ones from each subsection. Let's start off with some of the more unique recreational drugs. Some of the old reliable recreational substances like alcohol, marijuana, tobacco, cocaine, and heroin are still available, but drugs have much more advanced chemical compositions in 2077. First we have the blood of Christ. This fills the user with the feeling of divine euphoria as if God has touched them. They have no worldly fears because anyone under the influence will feel like God will protect them. Next we have a street drug called rabbit, which makes users cowardly, horny, and they don't eat. The benefits however include increased running speed and enhanced perception. Shotgun shell is a new drug served in places like brothels and nightclubs. It's served in a shotgun shell filled with a mix of drugs and you can either unscrew the top of the shell to inhale the powder or do it the night city way. This means inserting the shell into a Militech crusher and firing it up your throat. This substance makes you highly aroused. Synth coke and snap coke are advanced formulations of cocaine and give the user a very similar experience to its regular counterpart. Stat boosters increase any one of your stats after dosing. Intelligence boosters like Brainstim, Bluebird, and Six Gun are some of the most powerful in the world of cyberpunk. Brainstim stimulates the growth of dendrites in the brain and allows the user to have total awareness and greatly enhanced thinking. Users often develop god complexes in a very short time based on how all-knowing this drug makes you. Six Gun and Face were developed for Microtech Netrunners and give them tremendous boosts in the net and during netrunning activities. We'll talk about the net a little bit later. Dab Hand is a tech booster which increases a techie's dexterity with small instruments for a long period of time. Like I said, there are a ton of drugs in the universe and Artal Sorian just recently showed off some of the more basic ones in their Cyberpunk lore series, so I'll put that up on screen if you guys want to pause the video and check those out. If you want even more information, check out the Future Drugs and Addictions video I have posted on my channel. Next we have the Net, Netrunning, Cyberspace, and AIs. The Net is a vast telecommunications network that joins all of the computers and telephones on Earth. In the late 20th century, the only way you could enter the net was through a computer and a modem, but in the world of cyberpunk, you can enter the net directly. You can do this using your brain, interface plugs, cyberdeck, and an interface program that turns computer data into three-dimensional environments and events. Netrunners are advanced versions of computer hackers that use this new form of entering the net in the ultimate challenge of man versus machine. Netrunners face off against deadly anti-intrusion software to enter corporation and personal data fortresses to extract secrets like hidden blueprints and insider stock tips. In the world of cyberpunk, this can all be sold at a high price and the best netrunners are celebrities in their own right. Netrunners are also used for backup during missions. They are hackers at the end of the day and that means they can digitally pick real world locks like T-Bug does for us in the gameplay demo. This can be useful during missions, and netrunners are invaluable for most of these. Most heavy solo teams have a netrunner on the payroll, and corporations also hire out netrunners 
to reverse engineer their protection programs and methods. NetWatch is a police service on the net that monitors net activity. Cyberspace and net laws are fairly weak though and enforcing of laws is a monumental challenge as netrunners can be ghosts leaving little to no online digital footprint. Now the net geography is analogous to the real world. Real world locations and regions have a net equivalent, although this only extends to areas that there are computers. This means that regions in the net shift based on the distribution of these telecommunication networks in the real world. The regions in the net include Atlantis, Rust Belt, Olympia, Pacifica, Tokyo Chiba, Africana, Eurotheater, Space, and Orbitsville, and again they all correlate to real world locations. Your icon is your avatar in the net world, and everything from programs to data fortresses have icons that represent what they are in the 3D net world. Every icon can be customized. For example, a Pitbull anti-intrusion program can be stylized like a dog with a spiked collar. Data fortresses are simply a 3D representation of a real world computer, but in the net. Again, this can be customized and you can make your fortress look like a mansion, tower, nightclub, or whatever you want. Data fortresses hold information and their strengths are dependent on their code gates and walls. Programs are deployed in the net to prevent netrunners from extracting and breaking into these data fortresses. They can fall into the category of detection, anti-system, stealth, protection, and more. Shields are protection programs that stop direct attacks on netrunners. The highest tier of protection programs are called FLAX and will protect a runner against Pitbull, Bloodhound, and Hellhound programs. Detection and alarm programs will warn a data fortress about an attack from a netrunner. For example, the Bloodhound is designed to detect illegal system entries and will track the source of any entry. There is also the Demon series of programs designed by legendary netrunner Roche Bartmoss. These types of programs can carry multiple programs in one and their icons are usually giant imposing figures who are pretty well dressed. AIs are present in the world of cyberpunk although most of them reside in the net. Some are created by corporations, some are accidents, and some are spawned by the infinite nature of the net. AIs range from DHC AIs, which are simple and designed for specific functions, to human AIs, to transcendent AIs who were not programmed by anyone and were spawned out of the matrix of cyberspace. AIs might be something we experience in our traversals of the net. All of this considered, netrunning is a dangerous game. Finally, we have the super fuel of the future. It's referred to as Chu 2 in the demo, and based on the history of Night City, was developed by mega corporations to replace gasoline and diesel fuels as the leading combustible fuel. Chu 2 burns cleaner than gas or diesel, but the fuel itself is toxic and can cause blindness at low doses and death at higher doses. Mega corporation Biotechnica created the essential wheat T. vulgaris mega suavis used in Chu 2 through genetic engineering. Because of how small Biotechnica was, they couldn't keep up with supply and demand and licensed its production to bigger Petrochem. In Cyberpunk 2020, Petrochem produces 60% of the Chu 2 in the world and supplies every gas chain in the country. Jackie's supercar, the Quadra VTEC, and presumably all supercars, bikes, and aerodynes in 2077 will run on Chu 2. Thanks for watching, guys, and subscribe for everything and anything Cyberpunk 2077.